Moving on, uh, so co Korean artists also uh, studied oil painting. So Kim Guan Ho is one of those painters of oil painting. He went to Japan to study advanced oil painting technique. And this, uh, the painting called Two Baders was one of his graduation uh, works in Japan. And this was shocking, right? It shows the, the back view of uh, nude women. Um, so if you see the newspaper caricature, it comments on it. Uh, so most the viewers felt quite embarrassed <laughs> by the um, exhibition of nude painting. Uh, and the woman, especially the mom with a young boy, says, oh, it is so embarrassing to talk about this in front of my child. Uh, and then the little boy innocently asks, you know, mom, why is this lady lying down naked? Uh, so you can see that uh, the, the gap between avant-garde artworks and the public reception of it. Korea also started to have uh, European style buildings. So this is a Gothic style building made in, uh, built in 1897. Emperor Gojong uh, provided the land and um, architectural resources. Uh, and um, the French uh, priest helped to build this um, cathedrals in Seoul. Uh, and then uh, Gojong also started to receive foreign envoys in his palace. And he realized that they also need European style buildings. So this is uh, inside the Doksugung Palace. This is a Greek temple, right? You see the pediment and then the Ionia, Ionic columns. Uh, they made the Greek, Greco-Roman temple style palace. That was 1909. So these are all built before the annexation by Japanese government. And now Japanese government um, started new institutions. So this is a bank, um, official bank of the Japanese government general. And then you are going to have a city hall and you know, a few more. Uh, and then in terms of development of Korean modern painting, um, a number of artists studied in Japan. So Hwang Gi Kim is one of them uh, who's, who was born in 1913 and died in 1974. Do you know where he died? He died in New York City. He was living in New York since 1960s. Um, he was a very ambitious painter, also excellent painter. So he was uh, creating something uh, figurative, figurative painting. And you recognize what this type of base is? Remember we studied this? It's called Moon Jar or Dal Hangari. Remember we studied in Joseon Dynasty, late Joseon Dynasty, uh, white porcelain. Um, and then he has maybe remember we studied along with the Celadon, Korea Celadon. So this is this shape is called the Mebyang, uh, Mebyang shapes of ceramic. So Kim Hwang is a, a successful old painter who transformed traditional motifs into a uh, European medium of oil painting. But when he came to New York, do you see these two works? What is the category of this type of work? Is this figurative? No, these are called abstract painting. So uh, toward the end of his life, Hwang Gi Kim also mastered uh, abstract painting that was popular at the time. So that is the end of Korean art, Korean modern art. And now uh, I am out again. And then I am going to uh, give you a little bit lecture on uh, Chinese modern art. Let me see, Chinese modern art is here. So in your final exam, you don't have uh, many questions for uh, Chinese modern art because um, you you will study Chinese modern art uh, in in other classes uh, or Chinese contemporary art in other other classes. Uh, so just like a um, what is it? Um, Japanese or Korean modern art, there were a number of Chinese artists who wanted to study abroad. Uh, but 
China suffered from the, the defeat at the Opium War. Do you remember the Opium War that took place around the 1850s? So um, China once was the largest country in East Asia. It was really strong and resourceful. Uh, but um, in the when Japan started that major restoration in 1860s, Things were not going well for China. Uh, from 1860 to all the way to 1960-ish, China is going to lose in a number of wars, humiliated, and a lot of tumultuous uh, events um, for the people. So Hong Kong, where is Hong Kong? Hong Kong is here, right? Um, and then uh, why was Hong Kong uh, a city country that belonged to the United Kingdom? Like, why was it part of Britain? Have you ever thought about it? Well, during the Opium War, 1850, the war continued a few years. Um, so from 1850 to all the way to 1999, about 150 years, 150 years of Hong Kong, that the little island was lent to the British island. So that's why uh, Hong Kong uh, was returned back to uh, back to China 1997. Uh, and then Macau was lent to Portu Portugal and then it was returned to China in 1999. So now, uh, as of 2020, uh, both Hong Kong and Macau are now part of Chinese territory. So you, you witness all these changes during your lifetime. Uh, anyhow, coastal cities along um, Chinese territory, uh, young people wanted to learn again oil painting, uh, new types of artistic medium, and they went to Japan to study. Or some people went as far as to Europe to study. Um, so uh, they accepted um, European style artwork as well. But after 1949, what happened? What happened in 1949 in China? It became a communist country. Uh, they were fighting, there were civil wars, but eventually it was the communist party that won. So after 1949, the nationalist party uh, you know, who, who had the powers over the coastal city, they came to Taiwan, so that is 1949, and then uh, People's Republic of China became a communist country since 1949. So this is the People's Republic of China, and they also created um, vernacular Chinese language. It's a little bit easier for people to speak. Uh, with the simplified letters, uh, and that is that purple area. So this is the northern Mandarin, but you can still see some uh, dialects, especially near Hong Kong, Guangzhou area, they speak Cantonese. And so some of the Chinese in American citizens that we meet in New York City, some of them only speak Cantonese. They don't, they don't speak Mandarin Chinese. 